Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Kwink here, and I am finally bringing you my predictions on the last two assassins in Batman Arkham Origins. Now, we are doing a series called Road to Origins, where I will share as much details as I can without hopefully breaking an NDA, which I have not signed yet, so we should be good. Uh, this comes compiled from my own uh, personal uh, predictions and theories based on uh, theses and other things I've done in the past and also on the uh, cameos and other things we've seen from the villains that have appeared uh, only in name in both Asylum and Arkham City. Now I think that these characters will have a bigger impact in both Origins and Blackgate and possibly other prequel based games. So uh, without further ado what we're going to be doing is using the armored uh, gameplay from the Wii U version since it's fitting since uh, Warner Brothers Games Montreal is the ones who have created Batman Arkham Origins that we would uh, be playing the game that they made for the Wii U and also the combat is going to be very similar in some capacity to uh, Origins as well such as Batman's BAT suit which was exclusive for the Wii U uh, will now use electric gauntlets of some kind in Arkham Origins, although they won't be quite as powerful as they were in Armored Edition, which um, was pretty OP, actually. Batman was already a very strong uh, character in Arkham City. You know, when he hits you, you went down, very precision-based. He didn't really need the extra boost unless they were saying something about Nintendo gamers, which I'm sure they were. But anyway, uh, some of the characters that have been confirmed that I'm sure all of you are aware of. Um, Joker, as everybody knows, I know a lot of you are like, well, he's not really an assassin. But I think that he is going to play a more assassin-based role in this. So I'm counting him as an assassin. He's crazy and an unpredictable genius. We saw him in one of the trailers where he's actually blowing up things. Now, Bane looks to be kind of like Joker's hired assistant, but also he has been hired by Black Mask as an assassin, but he has his own agenda, so Bane would be number two. Deadshot is, of course, a hired gun who's in it for the money, so he's the third assassin. Deathstroke wants to see who the best in the world is, and that's why he's going up against Batman, because he has more of a rivalry with his son later on, Dick Grayson, as stands with the new 52 as well. Although Deathstroke and Batman did butt heads back in the 80s, and uh, Deathstroke was actually superior to Batman in combat and beat him a couple times in the 80s. Uh, in their other uh, altercations, Batman always whooped him. Copperhead was uh, introduced in the trailer uh, this summer. And a lot of people were surprised about her inclusion because Copperhead has mostly been a male character. Now the reason that she's in it is she is an unknown assassin who nobody really knows who Copper is. Copperhead is kind of like uh, the whole Red Claw thing, whether... It's male or female, nobody knows, and if you saw her or him, then, you know, you're dead. So basically, Copperhead wants the 50 million. She has poison and brings some uh, different abilities to the table, which is going to be a problem for the Dark Knight. And Firefly was a character a lot of you were surprised about his inclusion in the game, and I said that Firefly would be one of the characters because he was teased in both games as giving Batman a hard time early in his career. Now, they didn't do an early in his career game yet, so Origins is a great place for Firefly to debut. And as long as Garfield Linz is very close to how he was in Batgirl Year One, I will have no problems with him being in Origins. From what I've seen of the trailer and some of the B-roll footage of him, is he is exactly how Linz is supposed to act and is going to be a very tough enemy for Batman to face for the first time. Now later on Batman will come out with different gadgets that will be able to subdue Linz very easily. But for a first night introduction this is going to be a very difficult battle for Batman. So having Firefly as the fifth assassin is a great thing. Now I have talked about uh, the characters that we know of that have been listed as the five or six or whatever not counting the joker although i am counting the joker because i really think that he starts out kind of low and then just kind of leaves and doesn't really want the money he just wants to see the world burn now a character that i've really been considering over another character i said talia agul originally but now i'm unsure of uh, talia being in um 
at least Origins, maybe possibly Blackgate and the League of Shadows will have more of a interesting role with that. But I personally believe that Lady Shiva will be the seventh assassin. Now, a lot of you are probably like, why Lady Shiva? Well, uh, her and Silver Monkey currently are appearing in Beware the Batman, where there are other characters from Beware the Batman that are in Arkham Origins, such as Anarchy, possibly Humpty, and uh, some others. Maybe even Rachel Ghoul, but we're not sure about that at this time. But she is definitely in Beware the Batman and plays kind of a sinister role in it. And if you're not watching Beware the Batman, you need to be, because even though the CGI is meh, the storytelling is excellent. But I can definitely see her being a thorn in Batman's side, especially early on. In fact, in the trailer, uh, there's a scene where Black Mask's contract is being given out, and either Lady Shiva this or Talia, a woman in a black and jumpsuit who is not Copperhead and wearing black assassin gloves with black hair, right. is Jack looking Ryan. over the contract on the Batman's TV head. Reporter. Now, a lot of people have said it's Talia, yeah. but I really think it could be Lady Shiva. Here? You tell me. And uh, don't what mind me like going that? over the while talking to what's his I name. You've seen you this cutscene before, so I can just go off Arkham however I want because place. we've seen the Arkham armored global. gameplay from you whenever, and it's not like the Creeper is going, going to be in any game until uh, possibly Arkham Chaos, which is the code name for Arkham 4 with Kevin Conroy. But anyway, getting back to uh, Shiva, I don't think it's a coincidence Thank that she appeared in Beware the Batman. I really, really, really think that she is going to be in either Origins or Blackgate, and she is going to give Batman a run for his money. Now, if some of you have actually read the comics or know about Lady Shiva, I know I'm probably not pronouncing that right. It's like Shiva or... But I always call her Shiva. Um, her martial arts prowess is m better than Batman's. In fact, she has beaten him time and time again, but does respect him enough that she hasn't killed him yet. Although there may come a day where she will kill Batman. At least early in his career, that's how it was. Um, so having a face-off between these two on Christmas Eve and her beating Batman or Batman barely winning would make for a very interesting thing for the game because Batman would really have to be on his guard and his overconfidence is his undoing at this point because he hasn't had to face these characters. So Shiva besting him is something that his ego would not be able to take because he has to be the best in the world. And the fact that he was beaten and beaten by a woman, that would make him really need to train or upgrade and make use of the game's uh, like uh, skill tree system or Batman gaining um, weapon abilities and things like that. Uh, Shiva is very important because she has been in Batman's uh, hair basically since 1975, although she didn't first appear in a Batman book. She appeared in some Kung Fu, like Robinson something, I, I can't remember. But um, later when the third Robin was introduced, Tim Drake and his uh, Robin Reborn series, which was basically just titled Robin 3, she actually trained him and helped him against King Snake. And that is actually a very uh, pivotal moment in Tim's life because he learned how to use the bow staff because she wanted to train him in weaponry because he's not a good fighter. So Shiva wanted him to pick a special weapon and he chose a slingshot and a bow staff. And he also uh, started to... Um, chip the bow staff in a way that while he was moving it would howl and things like that which would uh, have like kind of a um, bird like whistle to it or something it, it was they never really used it again it was just in that mini series but it was pretty cool that Tim was that creative but anyway she trained Tim and when Batman got his back broken by Bane which I don't think is going to happen in the game by the way because it's way way too soon Batman and Bane don't really have a reason to really have this animosity towards one another yet so having Batman's back broken now would be way, way too soon. And all those hints and clues that Paul Dini has dropped about that would be horrible um, for that to happen like right now in Origins. I, I don't think that would be a good idea at all. Because Dini and the writers of the previous games have um, laid the groundwork for what happened in the past between Bane and Batman. And it did not happen at the end of year two, which is when Origins takes place. But anyway, 
After Batman's back is broken in Nightfall, he and Shiva meet up and she retrains Bruce, but she teaches him lethal strikes, namely the Leopard Strike, which is supposed to be one of the most deadly moves in martial arts, in, in fictional martial arts, by the way. It's kind of like the uh, Omiki Touch or whatever from the animated series that Kyodai Ken was uh, trying to use against Batman, the lethal touch. Um, but, but anyway, uh, she trains Batman to come back as this really formidable killer Batman that was really going to strike fear into the criminal underworld and things like that. She also gives him a Tangu mask to wear that uh, will kind of help bring about this new creation she's trying to do with Batman. Uh, but uh, eventually, Batman completes his training without killing anybody, although he makes it appear that he does defeat his final test by killing him, but he just incapacitates him to the point where he looks like he's dead, but he wasn't. Lady Shiva actually ended up killing the person Batman was supposed to, but she doesn't go after Batman and finds an even more newfound respect for him. Later on in one of my favorite storylines, uh, Ra's al Ghul's legacy storyline with the legacy virus, she betrays the League of Shadows again and uh, works with Batman and Nightwing and all those other people. It's also important to note uh, that Lady Shiva has a very important role in uh, Batman and Oracle and even Batgirl, Cassie Kane's life, because she is her daughter. Cassie, one of everybody's favorite Batgirls, is the daughter of Lady Shiva. And both Cassie and Lady Shiva have not been hinted at in any of the previous Arkham games whatsoever. So it would be really cool to see the Kane family be introduced in the early Arkham games. I think that would be great. But, um, yeah, Cassie, I, my favorite Batgirl was always Babs or uh, Stephanie Brown. But for the 90s, the silent trained killer Batgirl being mentored by Batman and Oracle was a really, really great storyline. And it went on for a very long time. But um, I definitely think that Shiva would work for Origins and very, very well. Whether or not she's going to be in it, we don't know. Like I said, uh, the thing in the trailer that uh, was shown this summer with a woman in kind of a black ninja outfit looking over a contract could very well be Talia. Uh, Talia is a force to be reckoned with, but she's not in the same class as Lady Shiva. Not even close. Uh, Lady Shiva is almost in a world on her own. She can take out just about anybody. But if the writing's very good, I think they could include the character. Now, what's interesting about Lady Shiva that a lot of people don't know is she was supposed to appear in Bruce Timm and Paul Dini's Batman the Animated Series. But for some reason, the character was combined with Lynx and even some elements of the King Snake to create Red Claw, which I'm sure some of you remember that. Red Claw was this character that uh, was kind of a British or Asian killer something like that, and nobody knew her identity. And she really gave Batman a run for her money, and Catwoman as well. But, um, you know, it was supposed to be Lady Shiva. In fact, she even wore red, which at that time, Lady Shiva was kind of wearing, like, this blue um, jacket and jeans with a red shirt. So Lady Shiva and uh, Red Claw had similarities, to be sure. Now, in the New 52... Uh, Lady Shiva is definitely an assassin, and she did fight and nearly killed Batman early in his career. She was beaten, or not beaten, but kind of like um, taken by surprise by Robin, or rather Dick Grayson, saving Batman in a makeshift Batman costume with a Zorro mask, which was in Nightwing Zero. Uh, Shiva was impressed with Grayson and basically let him and Bruce live, but uh, shortly after that, which is very interesting, is that Dick Grayson, at the age of 15 or 16, becomes the first Robin. Not at 8 or 12 years old like in the previous canons, which really bothered me, but there's nothing you can really do. That's how the New 52 they works. It, they're borrowing elements from cinema, from all over the place. So basically stuff people have seen in the movies and things like that, that's how they're going about this. Which bugs me, but there's nothing we can really do about it, unfortunately. But uh, Dick Grayson, while they've been very adamant about saying there is no Robin in Arkham Origins and Blackgate, they have not said, even when I questioned them, is Dick Grayson in this game? They have never said no. 
so I'm going by that Dick Grayson very well could be in the game, which could very well lead to Lady Shiva's introduction as the seventh assassin. Because the um, direction that they went the story-wise, combining the New 52 and Arkham Origins, this would make a great introduction for both Lady Shiva and Dick Grayson because those characters kind of uh, work off each other. Bruce, Shiva, and Dick Grayson. So I would be very, very happy to see that happen because you remember, one of the key things that Warner Brothers Games Montreal has been saying about Arkham Origins, what makes it different, is this is not a Origins of Batman. This is the end of his second year. And something happens where Batman does not become kind of the, this ruthless psycho that he is in Origins. There's something that tames him a little bit. He changes. And the only thing that has ever done that in the comics is him getting a partner. And not just that, but being a father figure or becoming a father to a young man who had the same thing happen to him at a young age. Although, you know, having that happen when you're a teenager is a little bit different than an eight-year-old having their parents killed in front of them. So that's why I don't like the whole thing that they did with Dick Grayson and some of the other Robins by having them be teenagers. It just really doesn't work psychologically because they wouldn't really have as much of an issue of their parents being killed because they're already fully grown adults by that point. In most of the world's eyes, when you're a teenager, you're considered an adult, like a full-grown person. You're no longer a kid. So Robin's personality wouldn't be um, like Batman or anything like that. He would have like a cheerful attitude and things like that. And even as a kid, um, because he had Batman raising him as his son, um, Dick Grayson had a very cheerful and happy-go-lucky view of the world because he didn't have to be tormented for, you know, what happened to his parents. Yes, he was going to fight crime, but he was going to do it his own way, and he wasn't going to let it weigh him down. He was still going to do the job, but he wasn't going to become like Bruce. So, yeah. And what we've seen in the multiplayer, Robin is at the age of 15 or 16, and he's wearing a very similar costume to what he had in his New 52 introduction, like one of the first times. So they really are trying to tie these... Uh, Arkham and the comics together, which I don't like. I like that Arkham was its own thing with kind of a tribute to all the different stories that happened and the different incarnations of Batman. But now that they're trying to make it like the new 52 to kind of rush everything in the movies that they're doing now and getting new voice actors to do new 52 Batman, it just it doesn't really mesh. But I will be the final judge when you know, everything happens. Uh, Dick Grayson, I think having him like appear in kind of like this Zorro thuggish whatever his look was in uh, Nightwing number zero or zero hour or whatever his uh, origin thing I think that'd be work very well um, with uh, the you know origins game um, and the whole Batman forever movie vibe um, and also it would definitely be that Robin didn't appear in the game some costume vigilante helping Batman did and he became Robin later, like uh, during Batman's third year, he dons the uh, pixie boots or whatever, but it's not pixie boots. But um, anyway, uh, getting back to the whole Assassin's thing, before I said, I believe it was at a K-News video or something else, that um, Talon would appear in uh, Arkham Origins or, or something. I don't think that would be a good idea now because Talon and the... Um, trying to remember the name of the, the, the group. The um, uh, Court of Owls. That's it. Sorry. The, the Court of Owls and Talon are all connected in some way to Dick Grayson. And if Dick Grayson hasn't appeared in the Arkham games yet, then there's no way you can do a Court of Owls integration into the game because it wouldn't work because you're missing that key character. Dick Grayson played a very important role to that storyline because his family was actually involved with it. I mean, he was in line to become uh, one of the Talons or whatever, the Assassins, the bird-like things. And if he, you know, if Talon just appears without Dick Grayson, you're going to lose a lot of that really great storytelling that appeared in the New 52 uh, Batman. Uh, also, I think it would be great to see Tony Zuko in it and have like Robin maybe as a side mission where he's going for revenge or something and Batman has to stop him and mold him and you know maybe have like a little Jason Todd elements there or something. 
but um, I don't think it would be a good idea to have him become Robin at the end of the game or even hint at becoming Robin. I think Batman should meet Dick Grayson and have, you know, maybe see his parents get killed and try to uh, teach this kid not to go to the depths that he went and that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think that would be great, but uh, they don't have the, the writing capacity to do that, unfortunately. But they might surprise me. Who knows? But again, Talon, he wouldn't be a good fit at this time. Uh, going back to Beware the Batman, they have definitely caused a lot of ruckus, but both good and bad, because we can see that there are going to be a lot of characters that have appeared in Beware the Batman that are going to be in Arkham Origins. While Professor Pig is probably out there, and Humpty and Tweedledee and Tweedledum, th those people, they really wouldn't work. We already have Anarchy, except he's a little bit different in uh, Arkham Origins. I don't believe that I would consider Anarchy an assassin, though, because he's more like how he is in the comics. He is just messing with society. You know, Batman has to stop bombs. That's kind of a side mission in this. He confronts Anarchy and some of his thugs. Um, it's not really like this mastermind assassin. Now in Beware the Batman, Anarchy is this kind of cool, calculated uh, supervillain that's supposed to be like Batman's nemesis. Almost like uh, they're trying to make Batman and Anarchy two kings. Batman's the black king and Anarchy is a white king. It's like a chess set match basically is what the writers did very cleverly uh, for um, Beware the Batman. But um, Anarchy in this game is nothing like how he is in Beware the Batman. He's not Batman's equal. He's not Batman's nemesis. But uh, you can kind of see what they did with Beware the Batman. I, I kind of like that, though, because Anarchy in Beware the Batman is basically a new creation. He has gadgets. He has his own suit. He is playing a game with Batman, similar to how Joker and some of Batman's other rogues do. He's here. It just really, it, it was a great introduction, and if maybe Anarchy becomes something like that in this series, but I, I don't think so. He wasn't really mentioned uh, in any of the previous Arkham games, and you never really, you don't, even in City, you, you really don't hear about this guy. So either he gets killed or something happens, but I think that he's mostly going to be a side villain, just like the Mad Hatter. A lot of people are saying the Mad Hatter is the seventh assassin, and Shiva would be the eighth. I don't think that's right either. I think that the Mad Hatter is just a side mission. And even the uh, directors have said that the Mad Hatter is basically like the Scarecrow missions. You remember those psychedelic things from uh, Arkham Asylum? Well, that's what the Mad Hatter is going to do. They wanted to bring that element back because it was sorely missing in Arkham City. Even though you had some really crazy Riddler hostage situations, nothing was as freaky as the uh, Scarecrow stuff. That was very, very trippy. So um, it's great to see that come back. Uh, there are some other villains that um, I think will appear in the game, but again as side missions, or they'll just be cameo characters and might have a greater role in the story. Uh, I believe Penguin is going to be a mob boss or a black market's weapon dealer who's just setting up shop in um, Gotham over by the docks. Maybe he's messing with Black Mask territory. We've seen him in the trailer. I think it is very too early to have Scarecrow appear in this. Even if they're doing a Dark Halloween or Dark Victory, Long Halloween storyline or whatever, um, it's way, way too early for him to be in this because he comes during when Batman's more established after fighting all these costume freaks. Um, Harvey Dent, I believe, will not be Two-Face or even become Two-Face. He will be the DA in Gotham and will work uh, in some way with both Commissioner Gordon and Batman near the end of the game. I think Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Dent are going to be working against Batman along with the police most of the game, which they have hinted toward that. There's a character from uh, Batman Year One, a SWAT officer who's in this, who is going to be going after Batman with SWAT officers, and kind of like a Batman Year One thing where Batman's going to have to avoid these police. It's going to be very difficult. But it's also going to be something that we haven't seen in the previous Arkham games, so I like that. And I like that there are going to be characters from Batman Year One in Arkham Origins. And I also like that um, the DA and Commissioner Gordon, or not Commis Lieutenant or Captain Gordon, whatever, are going to be working against Batman early on. And then possibly it's either by Blackgate or Origins that they start to develop some type of working relationship. Not necessarily trusting one another, 
but uh, knowing that they both need one another to survive in the new Gotham that is created this night, Christmas Eve. Um, I believe that Victor Freeze should not be even mentioned in Arkham Origins or Blackgate, especially if they're going with the new 52 mold, because Victor Freeze is not the character that he is portrayed as in the new 52. He is insane. I mean, the guy fell in love with a woman who was in cryo, cryogenics or cryofrozen or whatever the term is, the medical term. And he thought the woman was his wife when he wasn't. And Bruce Wayne played the Ferris Boyle role. It was just all messed up. It, it, they ruined Victor Freeze terribly. So uh, going with the model of a Mr. Freeze or even the Batman, whatever, doesn't work with the established Victor Freeze that you meet later on who has a wife. It, it is Nora. It is Nora Freeze. It is his wife. You know, so you can't ruin his character because Paul Dini made him so perfect. So don't introduce him right now. Also, do not introduce Clayface. I think it would be a very, very bad idea to um, have Clayface appear in this because Matt Hagen uh, did not appear in the um, other uh, Arkham games. It was uh, Carlos or, or Carlo or whatever. Um, but what's interesting about Clayface, which some of you don't know, is actually he has ties to the League of Shadows and ties to Lady Shiva. So, you know, maybe Matt Hagen, the actor, could appear or his name or some type of cameo connection with the League of Shadows. But Clayface is not a character I think that would work right now, nor would Man Bat. I do believe that um, Killer Croc would make a great addition to the cast because Batman has not faced a character like that yet. I don't know what kind of role Killer Croc would play, if he would be like a sub-boss or an assassin. I don't really know. I think he would work, though. I really do. Uh, one character that I'm definitely leaning toward that I want to see so badly in uh, the Arkham game, it, it's a tie between two characters, and that's Prometheus. Now, Prometheus was a character that was showcased a lot in cameos. The cop killer, his first appearance was in New Year's Evil, February 1998, and basically he is similar to the Batman, as he saw his own parents murdered before his eyes, but it was kind of like a Bonnie and Clyde thing, killed by a shootout with police, and they were, you know, criminals. But he's devoted his entire life to hunting down and killing police officers, which is the exact opposite of Batman, who's devoted his entire life to hunting down and capturing criminals. Basically, how he would work in Origins would probably be as a side character similar to Mr. Zaz, but more like listed as an assassin. Like, he wants the 50 million. He, you know, he, he gets hired by Black Mass to do this, but he has his own agenda. Go and kill cops, you know? This would also help out Batman's relationship with many different uh, members of the world, or Gotham's finest, as it would kind of uh, create some things for later introductions for characters we've seen in the Gotham PD especially uh, Commissioner Gordon. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm tired here. Prometheus has been referenced numerous times in the Arkham games, from the Warner posters and the news clippings, in the old police department in Victor Freeze's base. Remember that? And uh, having him in Origins just makes the most sense, and it's a nice tie-in compared to Talon and some of those other people's. Plus, he's a villain that's psychologically insane and would work so well for the Arkham series. Uh, the other character that a lot of people are... Um, not really going to believe me or um, be on the same page with me is Calendar Man. And Calendar Man had a very um, interesting role in uh, some of the comics and also how Dini was starting to write him for Arkham Origins. Or not Arkham Origins. Uh, there's so many Arkham games. How they were writing him for uh, Arkham City and the original sequel. There were so many Easter eggs that are all over the place about Calendar Man. And there's also this interaction between Batman and Calendar Man that something happened. Something happened on a holiday where Batman put him away and Calendar Man just hates Batman. He just does not like him what's, whatsoever. So that hasn't happened yet. So having that happen either in Origins or Blackgate especially because Catwoman appears in Blackgate and is working like in tandem with somebody very, very important could be the Falcones, could be Black Mask, we don't know. Uh, if you've played the demo, if you were at a trade show or whatever, Catwoman is talking to somebody on a cell phone like she's um, doing somebody's bidding. like, And she's being very precise about what she's doing. So having Calendar Man meet up with her or you know, be introduced in Origins would be amazing. 
the guy is known for performing a lot of gruesome horror things like he's kind of like a serial killer so christmas eve is definitely this guy's mo it's also really heavily implied that he's done a lot to both commissioner gordon and uh, harvey dent and harvey dent we're pretty sure is in the game if anything i just see him as a great um thing other than man bat for origins but uh you know i i could be wrong um i think that he would work well but you know whatever i i can't really see david kane or a lot of the league excuse me the league of shadows people having more than one or two characters going after batman i think we'll definitely see the ninjas because you have those characters the um martial artists that are able to combat batman so i definitely see the league of shadows hand in this i also believe that uh, rachel ghoul may make some type of cameo at the end of the game like maybe the mastermind behind testing batman's abilities calling him the detective at the end something like that i i kind of like a the count vertigo thing we saw where talia was reporting to uh, her father at the end of that episode where um, they were trying to get this uh some type of cannon thing from Batman and it didn't it didn't really work well he ended up destroying it and uh, even though they lost the battle they continued the war so having that type of uh, interaction with the fans where they meet this hooded figure or something even even in shadows and have the same voice actor I think that would be great but I don't think Roz would really work as an assassin because uh, as he appears later in um, Arkham Asylum he's dead <laughs> so um, he was much older, and he even looked very old in Arkham City. So, having him be like one of this big assassin guys going after Batman doesn't make sense. But as a mastermind, or somebody who was like watching very closely what Batman was doing this night, would be great. Um, and uh, then you could get that little Talia thing. Maybe Talia is working with Lady Shiva. I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that it's either going to be Shiva or Talia. Because they don't have enough female presence in this game. O Oracle isn't going to be around. She's not Batgirl. It's way too early for her. Even though Garfield Linz is in this, Killer Moth and him aren't working together. So you can't really do a um, Batgirl Year One thing. Which is the storyline that was redone for both those characters. And you also can't have a lot of crazy uh, supervillains like, um, you know, Killer Moth and Crazy Quilt and things like that. Because you don't have a Robin. You don't have that colorful aspect to what Batman's doing right now. He's just putting random thugs in the hospital. There's really not these costume supervillains until the Joker comes on the scene and starts causing chaos everywhere. So this is something new that Batman has to deal with. I think maybe Harley Quinn will appear as a character that Joker starts to manipulate at the end of the game because we know Joker's not going to die. Uh, he's going to end up in the Asylum or Blackgate because he does appear in Blackgate. Uh, so, you know, maybe mm, there will be something with that. I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm still trying to get uh, things in order. All the other assassins that I've read about online, uh, somebody said the White Great Shark would make a great assassin. And I'm just thinking, no, he's more of a mob boss. And also the Ventriloquist. Um wouldn't really make a great assassin there, there's not this huge black mask hasn't lost control of the place yet so there's really no no reason for him to um have a division at all there there's no there's no massive turf war or anything so having the ventriloquist or the right white great shark or penguin and two-face doing this massive turf war that we saw in uh, Arkham City, and even the ventriloquist is uh, mentioned in Arkham City, by the way. He's causing havoc over on the north side of Gotham while the thing in Arkham City is happening, which you hear over the radio. So uh, he is around during this time, and the dummy Scarface did appear in Asylum. But there's no real reason for a massive turf war just yet because Black Mask is the one that's the head honcho in Gotham's crime syndicate. The Falcones are just kind of like bottom feeders. And so are probably the Moronis and whatever else. I, I don't remember all the crime families in Gotham. There's so many different ones. Uh, Sal Valesco I, is um, one too. But um, Black Mass has complete control of the city right now. So something's going to happen in Origins where he's going to lose his grasp. And then you'll probably see more crime families competing. 
and Batman will need extra help because he can't do everything on his own. But, um, yeah, I, I believe that's gonna, um, wrap this up. I'm completely... My, my mind is, like, all bling at the moment. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It wasn't really as edited as I wanted to be. I wanted to use clips and all this stuff originally, kind of do what I did for the Harley Quinn's Revenge stuff, but that just didn't happen. In the comment section below, tell me who you think are the final two assassins, and I'll see you next week with another Road to Origins. God bless and happy gaming.